Let's bring you this now. Cardiovascular disease is responsible for 35% of all female deaths worldwide. And this is based on a Lancet Commission report published this week. It is the world's first report on this disease on women. Uh, the report was presented by the All Women Led Commission, which included the University of Cape Town's pediatric cardiologist, that's Professor Liesel Zulke. Well, she joins me now, of course, to bring us those details and more. Prof, good to have you and good morning to you. I mean, I want to start with the significance, I suppose, of this first ever global report by an all-female-led team, leading experts, of course, in this field. This is quite significant, isn't it? Um, thank you very much. Yes, no, absolutely. Um, we're at a pivotal time, I think, in terms of gender equality. We've been talking about women in the boardroom, women in parliament, and now it's time to actually focus that energy on women's health especially the leading cause of death in women. Uh, we need to consider that women are not just different looking men. Uh, we've got unique physiologies and therefore unique reasons for um, uh, having the type of cardiovascular disease that we do. Um, there needs to be a new focus and this focus needs to be multidisciplinary all the way through from the patients themselves, the families, the researchers and the clinicians. Prof so this is absolutely the time. Yeah, and Prof, with that being said, I mean, what are some of the uh, leading uh, CVD uh, affecting women? I mean, uh, it seems like it's, 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 a, it, it's a one to take note of and to take quite seriously. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I think people are aware of some of the cardiovascular diseases that affect women, for example, coronary artery disease. But coronary artery disease has different manifestations in women. They present differently, different parts of the coronary arteries are affected, so they look different and therefore they're not recognized. Equally, heart failure, there are different types of heart failure, and then there are very specific types of diseases, for example, peripartum cardiomyopathy, which is heart failure associated with pregnancy. This is, of course, something that is unique to, um, to women, and it simply does not get the recognition that it deserves. Yeah, and, and that means that there needs to be solutions and interventions to this, right? It can't stay the same. And, and it seems this report, um, you know, Prof, suggests that what are some of the recommendations in addressing the inequalities in diagnosis, but also when we, you know, look at the treatment as well as prevention to reduce CVD? Yes, it speaks about integrated pathways. So, for example, we know women often um, present at women's don't add in messages there that relate to cardiovascular disease. So that's a very important avenue to be able to do that. It's very important that women are included in research mm. around cardiovascular disease. It's quite clear that women are underrepresented in trials, and then the findings of men are merely extrapolated to women, and this is completely inappropriate. Uh, we also know that uh, the kinds of screening that can be happening, for example, at your general practitioner is not happening. And then women are often unaware of things that we have, for example, symptoms of coronary disease may be quite different and therefore do not present. So all of these need to be taken into consideration and there really needs to be a partnership to be, be able to improve women's cardiovascular health. Uh, Prof, also when I'm looking into the report, you've outlined further recommendation here when it comes to, you know, addressing under-recognized CVD risk factors. Why is this important, especially, you know, those that require attention, um, you know, from, you know, the world as well as women that are affected by CVD? Look, if we don't understand our risk factors, then there's no possibility for intervention. I think it's very important to be, for example, know about smoking as a major risk factor. But I think we're not aware of the fact that women are the population where smoking is increasing, where there are very few um, cessation programs happening and where it actually has become a target for the industry. So there are many other risk factors that we need to consider, especially around our um, female hormones, for example, the times of pregnancy. I think one of the other things that's very important is also the importance of social injustice, of women living in areas of deprivation, intimate partner violence, the stresses that we're under. Uh, many times women look after their community's health, their children's health, their partner's health. 
um, but don't look after their own. Mm. So this is what we're trying to encourage with this commission. Brilliant report, and thank you so much for sharing this information with us. With the University of Cape Town pediatric cardiologist, Professor Liesel. It's a pleasure talking to you.